It's time for fresh ideas and a house of wheels. It's Springfield versus Joplin right here in the Gray Rocks kitchen for this brand new episode of Show Me Chefs. I think the interest to get me into this industry came from just lots of Sunday dinners at my grandparents' house, starting out peeling potatoes because that's what our little hands were good for, um, to just being inquisitive to what food could do. And then um, I guess I kind of just pedaled toward the end on the spectrum of what food could do for me. I never really knew culinary was where I wanted to go. Um, my dad was a graphic designer and I kind of wanted to follow suit with that. I can't really say what dawning moment I had, but culinary arts stuck. And it's something that's derived the passion so much deeper than I could ever even imagine for. And with my culinary arts degree, I also picked up hospitality management as well as some business courses just to potentially be able to get my own business. I am looking forward to the competition. But more importantly, I'm excited to see the mystery baskets and what you, what um, Show Me Chefs have, has to offer and see what they bring to the table just because I know that they follow suit of getting exponential weird things and seeing what I can do with them, even if I've never tasted them before. I think that's the most exciting part. Uh, when I was really young, I always was attracted to the kitchen. Uh, first reason, because I love food. And I spent a lot of time cooking with my mom, specifically. Um, she was the wife of a pastor, and we always had people at our house, and we we're always cooking at church. And those are my first memories with food, and uh, it was my first happy memories with food, just working right alongside my mom and learning. Uh, the family recipes, which actually come from my dad's side of the family. And then uh, my experience when I was even younger than that, in living in the Central Valley in California, uh, in eating kind of a more multicultural food, uh, which kind of led to our menu here at the Wheelhouse. Um, uh, a lot of my family are Mexican, and they run Mexican restaurants in California. And uh, that's always been a huge influence on my personal cooking, and then of course the other, all the other nationalities that are represented there. And so my early memories with food are really uh, kind of broad and uh, just kind of full of spice and flavor, and a lot of uh, food that comes from traditional American culture, but also from Hispanic and from all over the world. So I've always really loved working in the kitchen. All right, our first round today is the appetizer round. In this round, you will have 20 minutes to craft the perfect appetizer utilizing our mystery ingredients. Keep in mind that you have unlimited access to our pantry provided by Springfield Wholesale Grocers, as well as the spice rack provided by Chabam Teas and Spices. Now, also keep in mind that the winner of this round will get a little bit of an advantage in the entree round, whereas the loser will have to deal with a little bit of a penalty. All right. You'll be crafting your appetizers using uh, hot and spicy giardinera from Vince's Giardinera, ground pork from Gemstone Farms, fiddlehead ferns, and apricots. All right, chefs, you have your mystery ingredients. Are you ready? Yes. Ready. Your 20 minutes begins now. Oh, I'm excited about this basket. While the chefs are getting started, let's take a moment to meet today's judges. First up, we have from Ozarks Fox AM, Jeremy Ray. We also have Kim Matney Schmidt from season three of Show Me Chefs. And of course, returning again, our head judge, Angelo Wanathantri. I was feeling nervous and pretty confident. I've been reading up and I'm, you know, physically nervous, but I feel confident in my head. Yeah, they're so, off to a Chef quick Jessica start. Jessica is going to town, seems like. Jessica, what are you doing? Are you making meatballs right now? Yes. Ooh, now that's fun. that's a good, a fun idea, I think. I think that's a good appetizer. It is. What are you going to use the apricots? How are you going to use them? Uh, just thinking on it right now. It, okay. I, it's still working. Give me a couple minutes and I'll be able to tell you. The appetizer basket round uh, didn't necessarily throw me for a loop, but it was nice to see things that I hadn't ever really cooked with before. Um, never cooked with the ferns, so that was definitely a learning experience. 
very drafty thing, so how to make it work. I like that they're going for the pantry. And this is, yeah, and, and you can see in different episodes and different you know, times in the competition, some chefs will really go to the, I mean, the pantry and utilize me in the pantry, and some chefs will just use the four or five ingredients that mm -hmm. we give them. What's your philosophy on that? Do you prefer more of the pantry items and the mysteries are just like a starter kit? I need the mystery ingredients to be the star, mm -hmm. but I need you to make a complete dish. When I first got here today and got a chance to see the pantry and the spice rack, I immediately noticed there was a bunch of Asian spices and hot peppers and root vegetables, so I decided to make pancakes. Chef Zach, now yep. I saw you uh, grilling some uh, green, uh, green onion. Yeah, I'm gonna mix this with some mayo and a little Greek yogurt and uh, some of the juice from this. Chop up some of the apricots to make like a, almost like a sour cream dressing. Yeah, gotcha. Awesome. Now, at your restaurant, do you have anything close to those ingredients that you use? Uh, we make Korean pancakes in the morning for breakfast, so it's similar. Sorry. I never made these before, though, gotcha. so I hope they turn out. <laughs> I like that. Trying something new. It's the only one way to find out. Get a brand new Zach creation. That's 15 minutes on the clock. Our chefs simply wouldn't be able to do all this magic that they do without some amazing kitchen equipment. And so we've sent our field host, Joey Fittick, out to Arctic Food Services to check on all the amazing things that they do for the culinary community here in the area. Today we're here at Arctic Food Equipment. Now this place is somewhere extraordinary. If you've never been here, you've got to check it out. I'm joined here today with Nathan. Nathan's going to tell us a little bit about Arctic Food Equipment. Uh, we sell or service every single thing uh, in a restaurant. We pretty much can do anything that you could possibly need in a commercial kitchen or a restaurant, gas station, hospital. One thing people don't often know is that we're open to the public, so anybody can come in, whether you're a serious home chef or just starting out. We're a really fantastic place to get home equipment. Come here, don't go to the big box stores, We've got great quality for really about the same price, sometimes even less. We have a, a massive showroom, about 10,000, 12,000 square feet. So we have a lot of things in stock. You know, even if we don't necessarily have it in hand, we can get what you need. What would be your strangest item you carry here in Arctic Food Equipment? You know, we've got all the normal kind of stuff. The strangest thing we have in the store, we do have ice molds to make ice sculptures and that kind of thing. But we do carry all of that type of stuff even. So what's an average day for you here at Arctic? We work with restaurants. A lot of times Mondays are crazy because who knows? what happened over the weekend. Fridays are very busy days too with you know restaurants trying to prep for the weekend. That's one of the things I love about the industry is it's different every day. You know, we just want to be honest, we want to build a long-term partnership. The better your restaurant does, the more business we get to do with you. So we're very geared towards helping you run your business the best possible way you can. Nathan, we're gonna get back to you. I'm gonna go shopping. So apparently all of this glassware is from Arctic Food Service. You know what, I think we should have a cold one in their honor. What do you think, Joey? I agree with you. All right, Mary, what are we doing as a pairing today? So today our pairing cocktail is gonna be a classic bourbon egg white sour. Um, except instead of regular simple syrup, I have a herb simple syrup. So rosemary, a mixture of alpine herbs, and then it'll be fresh lemon juice. The egg white foam I'm gonna be brulee with vanilla bean sugar. And to top it off, we are using the Hey Mister Tangerine Kettle Sour from Thai and Timber Brewing Company. But I think they are ahead of the game right now. I, I feel like they are. So she is going to the Red Top. What is that, uh, Chef? What are you using apple from butter? Apple oh, Butter? Oh, Apple Butter. From Red Top Oven. I love that. Yeah. So, a fiddlehead front. What would you use those in? It's one of those things for me that you either cook it very, very quickly, very, very fast, so you keep that crunch and that earthiness uh, to it, yep. or making it into a pesto, yep. or either, flash either cook it, it yes. or don't, like, yeah. cook it super fast. Yeah. I'm oh, interested to see the taste of it. You've yeah. described it well, but I don't think I've ever had <laughs> it. Can we just thank Mary again for this cocktail? Yes. yes. Cheers, Mary. <laughs> Cheers, Mary, to Inventivore mm. and Thai and Timber and Missouri Spirit. Absolutely. So delicious. All right, chefs, we have five minutes left on the clock. Only five minutes left. Oh, okay. Ah, there we go. You gotta put a little oomph on it. <laughs> Chef Jessica picked two different kinds of plates. It looks like dinner at my house. Oh, they don't oh. match. <laughs> Chef Zach's got an orange. You know, there's nothing like good orange. It's amazing how much you like it. Five, four, three, 
two, one. Chefs, please step away from your plates. Good job, guys. Whoa. Well done. Whoa. Yes. Oh my God. All right, the chefs had only 20 minutes to create a culinary masterpiece for their appetizer. Chef Zach, you are up first. Please talk to us a little bit about your creation. It's kind of like a potato pancake, a latke, only instead of potatoes, I use cauliflower and parsnips. So it's got eggs, got a little chili oil on there, and then the local pork. And then the sauce is yogurt and mayonnaise with uh, garlic and uh, the charred green onion. What is the heat I'm getting? There's a uh, heat from a little cayenne. Where I like the, the heat. Yeah. Where are the fiddleheads? They're in the cake itself. Zach, I think I love everything, but I wish I had a little more of that apricot flavor oh, coming nice. through the yogurt. That would have elevated your appetizer to the next level. To me, the presentation was fantastic. If this was on a menu, I would order it, and that yogurt concoction. Just give me a spoon, I'll eat that. Reminds me a little of tzatziki. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah, it's really similar. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chef Zach. Thank you. All right, next up we have Chef Jessica. Chef Jessica, please let us know a little bit about what you've created for us today. I did a savory meatball. It's got a lot of Italian herbs in it, uh, sauteed mushrooms, and a apricot pumpkin butter. It also has the fennel in the meatball. What's the treatment on the tomatoes? Uh, they're just charred in the vanilla bean sugar. Salt, vanilla bean salt. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Almost like a Provencal yeah, tomato. Yeah. I appreciate the use of the mushrooms in the meatball that kept everything really nice and moist. Um, pork has a tendency to dry out pretty quickly yep. when it's ground. Um, I think the sauce, the apricots, and the jardiniera and the pumpkin butter could have used a little bit more of something, and I'm just not quite sure. Probably an acid. Maybe a little bit of acid. I thought of it at the very end with the savory and juice, acid. and yep. I was like, ugh. All in all, though, it's excellent. And I haven't said much because I've been enjoying eating it. <laughs> yeah. Because I just want to eat it and I don't want to talk. Jeremy and hey. I were talking. This is the perfect appetizer size. Very good. Thank yeah. you. I enjoyed it. Thank you Thank so you. much, Chef Chef. Thank you. Tough. That's going to be tough. All right, chefs, now it is time for our judges to deliberate. If you would please exit the kitchen. Whew, after the first round, it's a relief to know that it's done and that um, I only have two more to go. I felt very good and I still feel really good going into the entree round. Not knowing whether or not I'm going to get the penalty or a bonus is pretty nerve wracking. Well, um, for a bonus or penalty, I mean, I never want a penalty, but as a chef, you just gotta think on your feet. All right, the chefs are gone. Let's talk. Let's talk. You guys were just chowing down on both <laughs> of those, both I mean, of those really meals. because they both did really well. Completely different too. Great. Like, yes. I think for me, it might come down to what would I order in a restaurant. Again. Easily, what is your thought on using the secret ingredient like the ferns? I didn't taste the fern in either one of them. I think that ingredient scared both of them. Yep. And so they hit it. So, I mean, it's going to be a tough one for us. Okay. So we got big decisions to make. You think yes. you're going to be able to choose a winner? Well, we have to. Yeah. We have to. We right. Okay. All right. Let's get them back in here. Welcome back to the kitchen, chefs. Chef Angelo. Do we have a winner of our preliminary round? Yes, we do, but it was a very, very, very tough decision. I bet time. it was. Two points separated. It was well done, both of you guys. So the winner of the appetizer round is Chef Zach. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, congratulations, Chef Zach. You are the winner of this round. So going into the next round, you will have a little bit of an advantage. In the next round, you both will have 35 minutes to create the perfect entree utilizing mystery ingredients. However, there's a little bit of a twist. You are only able to utilize the pantry for the first minute. However, Zach, since you won the last round, you will get an additional 30 seconds halfway through, and you can still use spices, just the pantry is what you're not able to use, okay? So yeah, breathe easy. But now, Chef Jessica, since you did not win the last round, you have a penalty, and that penalty is you will have to add an extra mystery ingredient. So one of these new ingredients is what you will have to use. You're gonna pick a mystery fruit, okay? It's gonna have a mystery number on it. It's one through four. We have the Tasty Joy Pineapple Gel, the Summer Raspberry Sauce, beach mushrooms, and my favorite, Caribbean jerk, pork rinds. All right, Chef Jessica, it's time now to pick your fruit of doom. We've got number four, Joey. You got What's number, number four? four? 
you get the beach mushrooms. Yay. Oh, you got Yay. lucky on that. That's a good one. Now, yeah. before you take your mushrooms, I've got one question. What did the ocean say to the beach? Oceans wave. They waved? Yes, they <laughs> waved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chefs, now it's time for us to unveil our mystery ingredients. Again, you will have only 35 minutes to create a culinary masterpiece with the following ingredients. This round, you must use Irish Dexter beef short ribs from Windswept Farms, Cobbler Creek blackberry wine from Bear Creek Winery, celery root, and chrysanthemum grains. All right, chefs, you only have one minute to get everything you need from the pantry. Are you ready? Your pantry timer starts now. Am I to grab some yeah. Sort of yeah, that's smart. That's very smart. Yeah. 30 seconds. When I heard that we were only gonna get 60 seconds to prove pantry, uh, it, was, it was pretty shocking uh, because I run to the pantry constantly when I'm cooking. Fifteen. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. No. Nothing else from the pantry. I have no oil, so this is going to be fun. All right, and your 35 minutes starts now. The appetizer dish. I feel it could have gone better. Um, I always finish with acidity, and within the last seconds, I didn't get that on the plate. I lost by two, which I guess you get what you don't put in. Okay, now, making an entree with no oil. It'll be done. It'll be done. She's got the grill. You can check this one in there. That refrigerator looking good, fresh and Too much. Just a Too lot much. of fresh, and it took up a yeah, lot of time. Jump. Well, that even if she had grabbed butter from the fridge, yep. maybe. That would, that would have been the first thing I would have grabbed. That Brussels sprouts with that wine. I think you yeah. got me on this one. Cooking with no oil is going to be Russian saute really intense. With that oil. I don't have any oil either. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, he doesn't have oil either. Well, at least it's a level playing field then. Yes, it is. But I do remember, doesn't Chef Zach get 30 extra seconds? Oh, he can that's grab true. Oil. That's true. I have an offer for you. All right. You can forego your 30 seconds yes. and get oil for both of you guys. Or you can say no deal. You can keep your 30 seconds and get oil at oil. that time. I didn't grab it on purpose. You don't need I'm going to keep the debate at this time. OK. All right. All right. Chef Jessica, how do you feel about that? This? Oh, you, didn't, hear, you didn't hear his deal? No. All right. <laughs> Let's leave it that way. I'm going to guess it was a part of not getting the oil. I think I heard something <laughs> along those lines. It's fine. I wouldn't do it either, but. Uh, okay. Oh. All right. So, I'm, okay. The game is game on. Game is on. Competitor. <laughs> Complete dish without. This would be a nice. I have dish. a fryer. Ah. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah. Clean the oil. I'll say from the first round, though, I'm confident in both of them. I, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm very confident. Absolutely. So, a lot of fresh food, fresh vegetables. Going yeah, on I'm excited. This is what we really, I mean, this is the true competition. They're really u utilizing the whole pantry. Mm -hmm. This season on Show Me Chefs, the chefs are utilizing some different kinds of protein. Today, the Irish Dexter meat that they're utilizing comes from Windswept Farms. We sent field host Joey Fiddick out there to see what sets these stubby cattle apart from the rest. Today, I'm here at Windswept Farms with the Windswept Farm family. Well, we moved out here about four years ago, and I was in love with the deer and the turkey, and then we started kind of looking, became interested in Dexter. We bought three cows, one of each color, red, black, and dun, which is brown. We chose the Irish Dexters because of their hardiness to start with. They're basically a animal that has three different purposes. They're used for meat, they're used for milk production, and they can actually be used as oxen to pull loads for families. All right, so we're back here at Windswept Farms. The wind already knocked out the power, so we're just gonna go ahead and talk through this. Brother and I have talked, we're pretty proud of what he's done at this point. When he first got into Dexter's, we weren't sure what he was doing. I wasn't sure what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think 
we both kind of thought he's going to hobby farm or whatever and he's going to he's going to raise himself a beef or whatever he's going to do and then you know now it's transcended and grown into into this really what what's a, a wonderful thing so what would be your facebook uh, one is simply when sweat farms and the other is when sweat farm to freezer and that is our sell page for for selling beef No, that's seasoning. Seasoned with authority. Yeah. Chef Zach, what was that? Uh, toasted coconut sugar. Ooh, Ooh. that'll be a nice balance yes. with that jalapeno. Yep. Oh, yeah. I took a peek in the pantry myself, and there's tons of different sugars and salts that are flavored over there from Chai Bomb. I think that's pretty incredible. I mean, they've been so nice to give us all the just beautiful, beautiful salts and sugars. So, Jessica. Yes. Okay, what you doing right there? I, uh, yeah, I'm kind of the most lost I've ever been in the kitchen right now. I want more ingredients. So that's definitely a loop thrower for me. Oh, Got a noodle. That Look at is, that. Uh, having, uh, rice noodle. Rice noodles. And I think she's going like classic American. She's got those short ribs braising. She's giving us like kind of colander over there. Classic steakhouse, like mushrooms, Can I buy Brussels sprouts. Yeah. I'd love to see them cooperate. Yeah. Yes. Working together. All right, chefs, we are at 20 minutes. 20 minutes remaining on that clock. Have you ever uh, worked with beach mushrooms? No, no, I have not. It smells like they grew up in a fish pond. <laughs> <laughs> there, are you it, it, about it's going to be interesting. <laughs> We are now at 17 minutes, which means, Zach, you have an additional 30 seconds to go to the pantry, starting now. Wine. Up on that top block right here. I think that the extra 30 seconds that I gained was an essential component because I forgot limes and uh, Thai basil and mint, which are three of the most important flavors for that dish. Ooh, he grabbed Five, that beautiful four, purple basil. Yep. Three, two, one. You got everything you need. Thai awesome. basil than an Italian. You're doing great, chefs. Keep like it going. That. that seems like a beautiful salad she's preparing. He's grating that ginger like it's there's no tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> you guys like ginger. Hey, you, you have do. used quite a bit of nice ingredients so far. Mm, Is you that... don't have garlic, do you? I have nothing, really. <laughs> I'm surprised I got something going on over here. Chef Jessica, were those celery root chips? I'm sorry? The chips that you just put on the salad? Yes. <laughs> nice crispy celery root chips on top of her salad. We've already got some texture going on. Man, this is going to be tough again, man. I mean. I can already, I can already wow. feel it. I Dude. feel the pressure, but I also feel like I'm watching a ballet. Yes because they're so into it. Like, if we didn't talk to them and interrupt them, it would just be this beautiful dance of them cooking, and I can see those wheels in their head just yep. turning, and now I'm just super excited to eat them. Yep. All right, chefs, we are at five yep. minutes left on the clock. Only five minutes left to get those plates perfected. Yeah, here in just a moment, we will find out what amazing creations our chefs have come up with. But before that, we have a little bit of trivia for you viewers at home. What type of vegetable can you use as a low-carb replacement for spaghetti that is not spaghetti squash? Think you know the answer? Tweet us your guess, and we'll find out right after this. All right, before the break, we asked you what low-carb vegetable can be used for substitution of spaghetti aside from spaghetti squash? Joey, what do we got? Well, the answer is chayote, chayote squash. All right, back to the chefs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chefs, we are now at only one minute on that clock. All right, now, Zach, make sure you get everything on the plate. You have a lot of components going on. You're right. He agrees with you. You said that, now it made me nervous. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Your time is now up, chefs. Please step away from your plates. Excellent job. Good job. All right, Chef Jessica, you're up first. Please explain to the judges your creation. Um, I did a fried potato and vegetable medley and a tossed salad with the celery crisp 
and then I braise my short rib in the same sauce as the salad crisp, and then I braise my short rib in the same sauce as the salad. Short ribs hard to cook in 35 minutes, but the sauce that you went with that accompanied really, really well. Thank it's you. Really good. For me, the dressing's a little sweet. I panicked and grabbed honey at the last second in that minute, and I had nothing else to compliment with it. The, so. the honey is great. It's just a little, it needs a little more acid, yep. a little something else. Um, yep. The potatoes and the vegetables are cooked beautifully. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Chef Jessica. All right, next up we have Chef Zach. Chef Zach, please explain to the judges what uh, culinary masterpiece you've created today. Well, this is my version of a Vietnamese boon vermicelli noodle dish. No. When you mix it together, all the flavors come together. It does. You know, man, I mean, I, I, I taste the yeah. chrysanthemums. I taste the uh, the onions, and I taste the carrot. I, and, I, and, and with the vinegar that you use, the only thing I can think of is a little soggy. I, I really like it, and I like the sauce a lot. And to me, I like I said before, I love extra sauce, just a little bit more on top because I, I really enjoy the flavor of that. Where, where was the? Remember at the very beginning, you you put into the food processor, the the celery root and all, all this stuff. Is that in? Yeah, that was one of the the right slaw. Oh, there I here. missed the. Where's my slaw? I missed my slaw. Well, you mix it up. Maybe I mixed it into it because I don't see. Oh, did you did, did you put? I it don't in see there? slaw. I must I must have not put it on that one. All right, Good great. Job. Thank you so Good much, job. Chef Zach. All right, the chefs are gone. We have a lot to talk about. Let's start with Chef Zach. Chef Zach gave us what he knows. I would have liked the slaw and the noodles and all of that mixed. It was a little disjointed. I, the, the thing I have is when I tasted it, I did not think tasty. I thought bland until I reached over and ate the thing that was missing from my plate. And you saw, I dug around on yeah, my plate. You did right. yeah. Some of those Which is strange because it seemed that like, like that Chef Zach had no idea that it wasn't on the plate. Like Correct. He, he understood that it was on the plate. So it no. wasn't a time thing, right? No. right? I think was, he miscalculated when he was plating yep. and yeah, skipped he had the some plates. left over. I needed something crisp. Correct. Like what Jessica gave us with those celery chips. Yeah. Those on top or even like a full size chip where I could have kind of scooped all the noodles with yeah. that, that would have been fantastic. Yeah. I'm telling you what I enjoyed too, and I know Kim and I disagree on this, but that sauce that Kim, I, I like mean, that it. Jessica put on. I like it. I like that sauce. I wanted more sauce. I liked it on the short rib. I didn't like it as the salad dressing. True. I get that. Okay. So I'll, was it I'll a different, the, the sauce that she used was the it same? Was the same. It, it was the same. It was the same sauce. It the, you know, to oh, both okay. together. Which but. is smart when you have a time crunch yeah. right. to reuse your ingredients. But again, difficult decision. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Very. All right. Let's bring the chefs back in. All right, we are ready for this episode's final round, which is Just Dessert. In this round, you will have only 25 minutes to create a culinary masterpiece using these mystery ingredients. But we have a little bit of a twist for you. Shocker. In this round, we have a specific dietary restriction that you will have to abide by. Your delicious meal has to be lactose-free. Are you ready to see your mystery ingredients? Actually, I forfeit, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's out of here. All right, here we go. Your mystery ingredients are chestnuts from Don's Chestnuts, granulated honey from Chabam Tea and Spices, butternut squash, and fennel. Tough basket. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Uh, mystery basket ingredients. Whew. Definitely mind boggling for sure. <laughs> When I first saw the mystery basket ingredients, I thought, what am I going to do here? Uh, I, I was kind of shocked. All right, chefs, you have quite the ingredients here, but your 25 minutes begins now. That's too smart. That's smart. That's very smart. She grabbed both my cards. Man, all I could think about was, please don't let him see those little pie crust tins on the rack. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I planned on doing, but that was what I needed to use in order to make it through the round. Get you got a sweet potato, mm -hmm. but my squash together. Yeah. Yeah. The great Some marriage. Pie. Now, we are doing dairy free in this round. Correct. The bananas are could be a good substitute in like a pudding or something Correct. for you dairy. Can, yeah. Because you can substitute it for eggs and things like yep. that. I don't mm -hmm. see why you couldn't blend it down and Correct. use it in place of dairy. Yep. So Jessica, I mean, yes. you were you know making faces when we were talking about them. 
It's definitely but, not what I would put in a dessert. I sure. like the sweet. I like the sugary, rot your teeth out kind of thing. <laughs> but to experiment with a savory dessert is definitely a challenge, but one that I'm willing to accept because it's something that I've actually been tinkering with like just in my own time to see what I could do with savory things. So look at that. Now you have it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> water and pecans in the food processor. Mm. So Zach, is that a technique that we don't know? Water and pecans in a... Uh, this is, a, I'm using as a substitute for milk, so I'm gonna make a custard. Uh, I'm glad that I can use eggs. He's making his own almond milk. There you go. Or pecan milk, I guess, yeah. All right, chefs, we have only 20 minutes left on that clock. With no dairy. Zach, did you add chia seeds? I, I added flaxseed, flax just to give some binding. Correct. And flax. flavor, because they have a really good flavor. Yeah. It's got a unique flavor. Yep. Ooh, Jessica grabbed the it's vodka. like opposite of mine. I, that already earned five yeah. bonus points for me. <laughs> <laughs> the vodka. You know, she just put down berries and the fennel and the vodka. Jessica, what was in the squeeze bottle? Balsamic vinegar. Balsamic. Zach, did you put the chestnuts in there as well? Not yet. I'm going oh, to make a, like a caramel uh, chestnut on oh. oh, OK. So you, 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 you made pecans in there rather than chestnuts. Pecans in here, gotcha. chestnuts on top. OK. Ah. With a lot of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm learning a lot from both of you, and I plan on experimenting in my own kitchen, thanks to you guys. Give us a call. Okay. Oh, I will. Oh, I will. <laughs> All right, chefs, we are at 15 minutes. Only 15 minutes remain on that clock. Now, the time is ticking now. Yeah. I mean, anything that needs to go in the oven, that needs to get heated up, whatnot, has to happen in the next five minutes. Yeah. I feel like this round has gone a lot faster yep. than the previous ones. <laughs> I am just intrigued on this too right now. I know. Never made anything like this before. Does that excite you, Chef Zach? What? I'm to make excited. something like this totally uh, different? New things, my favorite. Is that squash or mango? Squash. Squash. Ah, oh, but that's a good idea. Zero two. Oh. <laughs> oh, look what you oh, did. Oh, no, Angelo. <laughs> These are my favorite mangoes. Are those the little honey mangoes? Yeah, they're Alfonso mangoes. So actually, that's, that's what I thought he was doing. You know, <laughs> I didn't mean to give him uh, any crazy ideas. 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 Today's featured dessert is from Star Cakes Bakery, and uh, Joey's going to tell us a little bit about what we're pairing with it. Well, today we've got our own special blend of Ozark Mountain Show Me Chef's coffee. It was made specifically just for us. We're going to pair them with either our salted caramel, our lemon, our red velvet, our oh-so-delicious strawberry, or our decadent chocolate. What do you uh, think we should serve first? Coffee I, or dessert? Can we just do it all? Yeah, let's do it. Thank Ooh, you. This coffee is looks beautiful. wonderful. This is, this is Show Me Chefs. Show Me Chefs. Oh, cheers, my friends. From Ozark Mountain cheers. Coffee. Yes. Coffee. Thank you, Ozark Mountain Coffee, for doing that Ooh. for us. Yeah, mm. absolutely. The aroma is beautiful. That's delicious. Ooh. Mm. It's Zinger. nice and smooth. Zinger. So um, these cupcakes are from Star Cakes, right? Lisa gave you, uh, provided the Star Cakes? Yes, they're from Star Cakes, and, and I hear that they specialize in wedding cakes there. Is she that is an incredible baker, and she is very, very good in making wedding cakes. Uh, this is one well, of these look good. delicious. If this is only yes. like a little taste of little what taste of it. she can yeah. create, I, I would love to try yeah. that. All right, chefs, heads up. We only have 10 minutes left on that clock. I can smell those berries and fennel and all of that together. So I put star anise in there to complement the fennel flavor. We have uh, some cinnamon in the custard itself. So it'll have, it's not very strongly spiced. So it'll have the, the little bit of cinnamon in the custard and then the star anise and the fennel in the right? nut topping. Today our chefs are utilizing chestnuts from Don's Chestnuts just outside of Stratford, Missouri. We sent Joey out there to take a look at what's driving everyone nuts. My name is Don Gaunt. Mine's easy to spell, but my wife, she didn't work on that one. Do you guys have uh, an official title? Do you have it's a It's just Gaunt's name? Chestnuts. Don's Chestnuts? Okay. Yeah, just Gaunt's Chestnuts. Gaunt's Chestnuts, yeah. And my grandfather planted this chestnut grove 
of course, I didn't know anything about it at the time, but I remember him walking into the kitchen. It was cold outside, mm -hmm. and he comes walking in. He's got this handful of, I found out later, they were chestnuts. And he was so excited, he got his first handful crop because that they were started producing. And he was so excited about them, and he fixed them, and nobody liked them. And I can remember looking at his face and seeing the disappointment. And so when we came back here, I just kind of thought, chestnut trees. If y'all could travel back to 1994 when you guys were putting your first tree in the ground, what would y'all tell yourselves? What kind of heads up would you give? It's a lot of work. We didn't realize how You'd much work. You get rid of them before you're 76. Yeah. <laughs> Push those guys out of the way. Yep. You don't want those. Yeah, you don't want that work because what you do is you put your foot on one side and then you push with the other. You take it from one side and you push it apart. Open it right up. Yeah, hey, there we go. Hey, but I wouldn't reach down and do it. I <laughs> use the paddle. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and send it back to the studio now, guys. Thanks for joining me. My name is Joey. And this is Show Me Shots. We are now at five minutes. Five oh, minutes gosh, remaining on that clock. Yep, I am kind of stressed right now for the chefs right now. I mean, they have to get things done. Plated. I don't see any plates out there yet. Mm -hmm. Does she have to put the pie crust in? Well, I think she put the pie crust in the oven. Oh, okay. But I think she did. No, I could be wrong. And she could take, you know, bake the pie crust and just fill right. the filling and serve it. And serve it, yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay, I feel a tiny bit better with plates out. Yeah. With <laughs> Two, you know, all, it's three minutes now, so I'm glad that they're getting ready to plate. Okay. I think that's his chestnut caramel. That's a, that's a very ooey gooey caramel that he made. I hope it doesn't get too crystallized. Chefs, we now have only one minute left on that clock. Only one minute. It's been a pleasure to watch them work. Oh, it has. We have 30 seconds remaining on that clock. 30 Come on, seconds. guys, let it go. You can do, go. It. We can do, do it. it. You can do it. You guys got this. Good. Come on, Jessica, 20 on, seconds. Yeah. All right, Come guys, on. are you ready? 20 seconds. 20 seconds, let's go. It's the final countdown. Five, four, three, two, and We are now at our final round. Chef Zach, please explain to the judges what you've created for them. All right, so this is a nut milk based custard um, that's steamed and it also has butternut squash and mango in the mix. And then on the side is a, it's a reduction of a cherry jam and some date syrup and roasted, ch roasted chestnuts. And then on top it has a mango that's just diced and with some chili flakes and lemon juice. When I tasted the caramel, there was something there that I couldn't quite place. And when you said cherry jam, I was like, that's yeah. it. It complements that date syrup really well. I love the taste, but if it came in a different vessel that yeah, I Yeah, I had up. some ramekins. I just wanted it to be bright on the plate. so you could Gotcha. It's very creative, Zach. It is very creative. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I mean, quick thinking, very creative. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Zach. All right, Chef Jessica, you are up. Please explain to us your creation. Um, I did a butternut sweet potato um, sugar plum pie couplet and then a berry fennel uh, balsamic reduction with no strainer, so kind of more of a chutney sauce uh, underneath. When you make this, you made this in your mind, on your balance, how much of a, is it savory? I mean, it's more savory than sweet, right? That's what you went with? So I took your feedback from the first two rounds and there's a lot of acidic in the chutney, I feel. So I think in one bite, the savory sweet potato mixture with the butternut is very complimentary with the chutney, I think. Was there any kind of heat in there? Am I there's, tasting heat? Yeah, there's a, a very small pinch of cayenne, yes. Because I, I tasted the heat, which I love, and you can see what I did. I scooped it up and put it on top because yeah. you know how I love the I sauce. I thought about that, but I didn't know if it was going to re, the sauce was going to break if I heated break. it back yeah. up on the thing. So I'm finally dipping it, but I, I really like the chutney. Um, I feel like for me, it could have used a little more sugar though. Yep. Like, that's, yep. I was worried. To make me feel dessert. Yep. 
I, that's what I was going Other with than that, that, asking which it works way you really want to go. Well. Really yeah. you know, yeah. Really well done. Thank you so much, Thank you. Chef Jessica. You both have done such an amazing job today. The judges here have a lot to do. Their work is definitely cut out for them. Um, as they deliberate, we ask that you please leave the kitchen. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a tough one, guys. I mean, that's tough. You know, competition, but this is kind of really, I'm in a conundrum. Yeah, and we didn't pull any punches either. That last basket that we gave those guys, oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, That's one of the most difficult baskets I've seen. Yeah, let's talk about Zach first. Zach, I love everything that he did, but just couldn't get to it. Yeah, I was not, I'll be honest with you, I was not as crazy about the flavor of it by itself. Correct. You if had, hadn't had, had that, you had to mix it, because to me it's very bland just in the teacup. I thought the caramel was incredible. Yes. I thought maybe he took it just a tiny bit too far and it got a little too, too sticky because I feel like it's still stuck in my teeth. Yep. But it was Im it immensely was tasty. Yep. Yeah. I wish he had strained the pecan milk that he made, but at the same time, he also made his own dairy replacement. Yeah. In the same token. Yes, yeah, Chef Jessica. Jessica. I'm... I mean, she made sweet potato pie with the butternut squash, and it was wonderful. And to me, that's reminiscent of my childhood. Right. Growing up in the South, you had that sweet potato pie. So to me, she was also playing on my emotions, which food is emotional. Yeah. And it takes you back to when your grandmama would make sweet potato pie. So I really appreciated that. Now, that compote by itself, I would love to smear that on a bagel or yeah. on a piece of toast. Exactly. I really appreciate the, the taste of that by itself as well. All right, judges. It was a long deliberation, but we've come to a decision, yes? We have. we have. Bring back our chefs. All right. Thank you both so much. Uh, it's been a, a wild ride today. Jeremy, why don't you fill us in a little bit on the journey that we've seen from Jessica on this episode? What an amazing journey you've been on and my taste buds have been on today, which yeah. I appreciate. You know, there's been some highs and lows today. Starting with probably what was the low was the appetizer because it didn't stack up to Zach's uh, appetizer and I wanted a little bit more of that chutney just a little bit more of that chutney. But going into the entree round, you were penalized. You forgot oil. We were all sitting here thinking, what is she gonna do? How are you gonna make up? And that light bulb moment of getting the grease from the fryer was a genius move because you're thinking on your feet, which was great. Then leading up to your final, the dessert, I liked that you were scanning the pantry constantly. You were trying to think, what can I put in this? And we were realizing as we were drinking the coffee, the coffee had a cinnamon stick in it. And as we drank the coffee with the cinnamon, we're thinking, oh, that touch of cinnamon would have made all the difference in the world. I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Would have made all the difference in the world. He that, had it. <laughs> Chef Zach had it. Would have made just a, that little mm. bit just twinge right there on that sweet potato. Right. It, but again, my taste buds are so happy, and I think you did an amazing job today. Thank you. All right, and uh, Kim, tell us about uh, Chef Zach journey that we went on today. It was wonderful having your food, and I have to say I'm a bad fan because I haven't been to the wheelhouse yet. <laughs> but your, your execution of everything, all of the multiple components you made for every dish, and your talent are outrageous. I am a fan. Yep. Um, the romaine on both plates, I actually told them if I saw romaine in this dessert round, I was gonna lose it on camera <laughs> and was gonna end up on Jeremy's morning show. Um, <laughs> I could eat the pancake from the appetizer round every day. Yeah. It was incredible. Uh, you stayed in your comfort zone, you did what you know, and you brought it. Um, you made your own non-dairy substitute out of the nut milk, but there could have you could have strained it. That texture was a little off in that custard, but. I'm gonna steal the cherry jam use for caramels from now on. That was amazing. So thank you for everything today. All right, guys, it was a tough, tough, tough decision. I mean, I, I would say that, but I would truly mean it because this is one of the toughest rounds I've judged in four years, okay? Um, without going into too much detail, because uh, I think you guys have covered the both chefs, tonight's, today's winner by four points Jessica. <laughs> Congratulations, Chef Jessica. Man, I'm just ecstatic at the fact that me stepping out of my comfort zone led to something that <laughs> just was an amazing experience all around. Um, I honestly did not think that this is how it was going to end. 
When I was listening to the judge give the feedback on my performance, I was blown away, honestly. Uh, even though I didn't win, uh, the compliments that I received were better than I've ever gotten in my time as cooking. And thank you all for watching. Please join us on our next episode as we have two brand new chefs battling it out right here in the Grey Rocks kitchen for their chance to head on to the semifinals. We'll see you next time on Show Me Chefs. Yeah, yeah. their faces aren't red. They're, they're, not <laughs> they're not sweaty. Not yet, at least. We can turn up the heat, though. Chef Holland, you might want to watch for that. Wow, flames growing on the earth. Semi-finals. I didn't even think I was going to get past the first couple of plates, but um, I mean, I don't even know.